it's not me blowing your mind, Chris. It's God giving the revelation of time to me to put the pieces together to blow your mind. That was mm -hmm. God blowing your mind. <laughs>
there's one Bible that's been written that is at, you have it there? So why don't you pull up um, on in that Geneva Bible, I think it's, I don't have a page here, but it's, it's Ephesians. Okay, so I don't know how many translations there are in the Bible, okay? I honestly, I, I don't know how many translations because you don't think everything's lost in translation. <laughs> even, even in the, it was like, oh, the King James Version is the best. You understand, even in the King James Version, they removed a line. Mm. What line did, see, when you, you know, we have what's called now, the, you know, the, we've had the war on terror. See, what you always want to have, evil has to have a boogeyman, a bad guy. And when you have a bad guy, then you can always give your authority to the government, and the government can. Take I think it. I know which one you're talking about, but right. And so, I got it. Yes. So when you know your enemy, you can. It's like you, you know, like the the target. You can put your scope on a target on a target. If you know who your enemy is, it's a lot easier to defeat your enemy because you know who he is. So what they did in every single in all the Bibles, they removed the name of the enemy. So it's even as Peter says, we battle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and darkness, right? And so principalities mm -hmm. can be a lot of people, but it's not a entity. It's not a person. It's not a entity. It's principalities and in, in darkness, right? And there's no so you so who's your enemy? Well, you know, it's it's the war on terror. So it just it's all out there, right? It's but if you <laughs> knew who your enemy was, that changes everything. And so when you read. It's very specific. You can you can confirm what I'm saying here since you've got the Bible. It basically says, you know, in Ephesians 12, it says, we battle not against flesh and blood, principalities of, and powers in darkness, right? But then it says, and then it says, the, it says the entity is the prince of darkness of this world. So Ephesians, so that's the only Bible that was, this was never removed. They've hidden it in all the Bibles. And so it specifically names the enemy. And who is the prince of darkness? Satan, Satan, bingo. Okay, so there is your enemy. So we battle not against flesh and blood, but principalities in darkness, and we battle specifically. Let's know our enemy, the Prince of Darkness. That is who we battle, and the Prince of Darkness usurped our inheritance in the garden, and that enemy, that enemy, has been causing chaos on this earth ever since. Why? Because he hates. When I say you, I mean literally you. All those people listening, mm -hmm. he hates you. Hates you. Can't hates stand you. you. Why? Because you're made in the image of God. I so correct. Now you know your enemy. Bo, I had the greatest conversation today, two hours long with somebody talking about this and like opened his eyes. I was like, they hate you. They hate you because he chose you over them. He loved you so much. He chose you. He chose us over them. They thought that they were just as good as him and that that's where they belong. And they, they did wrong. And God chose us. He put us above the angels. Yes. That's how much he loves us. So they hate you because of it. Those who have fallen, they hate you. And it's so easy to understand. Like, you know, you say the saying, like we think about, you know, the, the murdering of children, for example, or the things that, you know, without getting all the details, right? But like the things that they would do to people, to humanity, to children, to killing people, like all these horrific things. And you say to yourself, like, who in their right mind would do something like that? Like, who in their right mind would want to hurt, let alone children, but human beings? Who would want to do something horrible like that? Who could really be that horrific? Like, back to, if you know your enemy then the answer is very simple. The very person, simple. the entity that's doing it is the prince of darkness. And right. that's why they want to, that's why they really removed that one line from any and all the Bibles. And it went, and the Geneva Bible, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's the Bible that goes back, I think the furthest from what I understand, and it was hidden, and there's no one's basically been allowed to have this Bible, but it's yeah. actually in that one Bible and it literally describes your enemy. And so you think, well, who could be that horrific? Evil. So now you understand when you, they talk about things that you know, they've done to humanity, they've done to people, all the killings, destructions, the billions and millions and billions of people that have died over the years, right? Since creation. How could all that happen? How could man be so human, uh, so uh, uh, unhuman? Man isn't unhuman. See, we love one another. 
The problem is these fallen ones, specifically Satan and then all his angels that he deceived. And on top of that, so you got the fallen one, and then you have the angels that work for him because he deceived a third of the angels. These mm -hmm. entities are on the earth. And what do they do? They occupy. So these demonic entities will occupy people in high in, in positions and then they raise these people into high positions and then they control the top of each pyramid. And so like the top of the uh, top of, you know, the three letter agencies, the top of Hollywood, mm -hmm. the top of the music industry, every single it, industry it, there is yeah. right down, right down to religion. Right. Because you can't because you can't build a kingdom on man, but they built the Roman Catholic religion on the shoulders of man, which is basically a lie. And so the point being is everything that we believe to be the truth is a lie because who is the prince of P uh, the who is the prince of the world? Okay, he's not the king of the world, he's a prince of the world. That's Satan. The king of the world is Jesus Christ. Okay. Christ. But the prince of the world is Satan. Okay. He would in heaven, his, his name was Lucifer. He was thrown out, his name was changed to Satan. So you gotta know your enemy. If you know your enemy, then everything becomes much more clear to understand. And then you come to understand that we're not living in political times because these political entities and people working in politics are all occupied by the fallen ones. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. It Absolutely. also says the worldly gov, like you said, the hierarchy, worldly governors. It doesn't. It says about, not of the rulers of this world. It says worldly governors in the Geneva Bible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so, so you, so when you start to grasp the 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 clarity, then things become clear, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you come to understand. When we talk about what what I do is, I look more specifically in, at the numbers. Not so much the numbers, but the math calculations. And because when you, there's three things we know. We know that there's the word. But if you read the word only, and you only read the Bible, the problem is you become very religious, and, and then you come, then you have like your opinions. Well, the Bible says this, and that guy said the Bible says that. No, the Bible means this. No, the Bible means that. And so you, that's that religious spirit begins to manifest. But God knew that would happen. So what did he do? He, he's a living God. He's not the dead God. He's a God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's a God of always. He knew if you only read the word, you wouldn't have true revelation of or understanding. So then he, what did he do? He has the prophets, his servants, the prophets. He speaks through his servants, the prophets, before he does anything. But also before he does these things, he does what? He speaks to them to give you what? understanding of his word so you get understanding of his word then you go back to his word and you go oh that's what he was implying right because now mm -hmm. it's not on your understanding it's god's interpretation his his understanding of what he really was saying because you're getting now that through the prophetic how awesome is this now the third level of this is what i do because i now take the math calculations within that and I do the math, and the whole thing starts to come to life to a whole different degree. And so we are now at a moment in time where the, the math is really adding up. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I'm ready. Yeah, it's the happy new year, right? Yeah. We're So March right. starts the new year. We don't know exactly what day this is going to go down. Um, there, I believe... Uh, so I know March is the start of 2024, and we're going to find out all together exactly how this plays out. Uh, mm -hmm. Today being the 19th of March, it's important to say that. Uh, and so we're heading into the end of the month. The last day of this month is resurrection. Right. Yep. You can't take these things lightly because of what these things mean biblically. So we're right. heading into the end of the month, then we head into next month, which is April and then May, and then June. And so all of these things that we're witnessing, or every between today, let's, let's, let's start with this, between today and the 9th of June, everything should have flipped. Crazy times should have manifested 
and the world should be screaming, oh my <laughs> God. See, because you say, oh my God, when biblical, when biblical happens, those that don't know what's coming or what's happening, all they're screaming is what? Oh my God. Why? Because in a foxhole, there are no atheists. It's a beautiful mm. saying. That's it's true. Saying. That is true. That's right. You can, you can have a, oh, I don't believe in God until the bulls are flying over your head yep. and, and the missiles are flying. And, and you know that you have probably five minutes, you know, one minute to live. And so that's what you in, in, instinctively, that's what people begin to scream. Yep. Yep. That's when everybody freaks out and panics, everybody turns to God, no matter who you are. That's right. And <laughs> what did Kim's prophecy say? Spring heading into summer. Mm -hmm. Summer would be the mediator. And then the fall, and you look at, like, if you just read the political climate right now, you got all the stuff coming up again about the 2020 election, about Dominion voting systems, about sheriffs in Wisconsin who've done investigations. A lawyer gets arrested yesterday for presenting evidence that the Dominion company was colluding with foreign adversaries to overthrow the 2020 election. And they arrested her because she leaked it to the sheriff in Wisconsin. This thing is about to, I can just, you can see it building up. You can see it building up. And spring, spring, there's going to be some, there's going to be, I believe, some massive revelations between, just like you said, Bo, between now, heading into summer, you got the dollar, you got, the world is in chaos. Let's just say it, it is what it chaos. is. The okay. world is in chaos. Chinese people are lining up for days to buy gold over there. It's just, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. Just yeah. how it's supposed to be. Yep. Yeah. And even speaking of that, and, and I, I think it's a, a good time to show you, but I, I found one. I found an older one. And, and what he says now, of course, back in the day uh, when Kim would prophesy and speak, sometimes he would drop dates on something I more focus on like what month he was talking about rather than the year. Yeah. Um, because it's, well, it's you know, and, and that's important. Let me just pause you because what you're saying mm -hmm. is listen to the date that he states more than the year sometimes, unless he specifically says a year. But the dates when they state things are important because like Kent's Christmas. Mm -hmm. This that's why this is fun to do this podcast today on the 19th of March, because exactly one year ago. Kent Christmas got a prophetic word. Yep. And what did Kent Christmas say? He st this was posted on the 19th. He said on the 19th or the 18th. I mean, it's probably the 18th posted on the 19th. But what did he say? He says, in the next seven days, I will strike a mortal wound to your enemy in the United States of America that, your, that, he, that he or the enemy will not be able to recover from. Mm -hmm. Yep, I remember. So, and everybody thought it was last year, but Kent Christmas never said in the year 2023. All that was stated when God was upon him, he stated very clearly in the next seven days, and he was stating it on I think this 18th or the 19th of March, which is right now, a year back. So, therefore, anytime between today and the next seven days, the enemy could literally see a mortal wound. And that Absolutely. would be, and then that will not be able to recover from what's about to happen. So continue what you were saying. Yeah. And so in this one, he says between 70 and 100 days from January of the 21st. And well, 70 days brings you to April 1st. Obviously, 100 days brings you to the end of April. But it's also interesting. He's got some things that he says in it, especially about precious metals, that I find very interesting. Um, what really caught my attention is because he's, he's talking about keeping your eyes on gold and watch what it does because it's a sign. And, and this is and before you yeah. say that, what have I said in all the podcasts, your podcast and all podcasts, not, not so much what I said, but God revealed to me is this is what God, the revelation is this is very specific. The day when you see gold below vertical, you can explode vertical with precious metals, silver, gold, and silver, but explode vertical. It's because of what God intervened on, upon the world because God's money will never, this is simple to understand. God's money. Gold and silver, Haggai 2.8, will never, ever, 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 ever be allowed to begin to experience or head towards true price discovery, means incredible numbers, in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Because Babylon uses fiat money, a fake money system. 
the Federal right. Reserve. So, so that's why. It's, so that's why what you're saying is very important because if Kim's speaking about gold and the move of precious metals, it means that God is intervening on the world, and we're seeing the move of gold because God's moving. Right, absolutely, and he did say before that gold and silver would be one of those wells that would, you know, just like everything we've talked about before, but just listen to this quick minute I think I got here. I saw a python, and God said, between the 70 and 100 days, it shall begin, it, the strangulation and the destruction of this will begin, and it is going crazy. It is manifesting throughout America, because it is dying. Now you may not understand spiritual warfare and Diablo and Satan, Satan and demons and darkness, but it waits for an attraction. It waits for an invitation. And as I've said, there's been great division. But also it was spoken of that beginning January 21st, there would be a period in between 70 and 100 days the spirit of Pythos will be destroyed if the people act accordingly. What you're seeing in America, maybe you call it terrorist, maybe you call it just incidents, it's not. This spirit is dying and doing its utmost to destroy as many states as possible. Make its mark. It'll be, it'll be leaving and we'll show that to you today. I'm not going to do anything more until we've, we come to this altar today. I wore this purposefully. It's the gold. And I'll explain that in a few minutes because he spoke to me about watching the gold as a sign. Is. Oh. Uh oh. Did you do that? Oh. Is. Yeah. That's crazy. Think about what we've <laughs> witnessed. Just what he said. It's dying, right? We it's look at, nice. we've seen. Yeah. The train derailments. You're just, it's like you're seeing all of this destruction all over our country. It's, okay, it's so, everywhere. It's everywhere. Okay, so, but we need to look at this very closely, okay, because we need to do the math and let's do some very precise math calculations. So he said, he stated, I'm just, as you're doing, listening, or as you're playing, that I pulled my calculator out here. Uh, and oh. so from January 21st, 2024, 70 days. Now, this is going to line up precisely with the calculations that I personally, God showed me, and we're going to talk about in this podcast, okay? So you're going to see that what you just showed, the Kim Kamen prophecy, we're going to layer that into the presentation that God's already showed me in the in the PDFs that I'm, we're going to talk about, but you'll see mm -hmm. it's, it's dead on the money, meaning it's <laughs> right on. To, and the first calculation is to the exact, I haven't done the second one yet, but 70 days is precisely March 31, 2024. Okay, so if you can put my slides up, <clears throat> let's look at that in terms of a cal with regards to calendar. And so, again, so this is what the world's going to be screaming here. Because when mm -hmm. God intervenes, we're going to see the world freaking out, Okay. The, from a, and again, this will be the best of times in the worst of times. Uh, understand, okay? When I say worst of times, I mean what they have sown, they're going to reap. And so, when let's look at the count. We, we did the two calendar calculation. We talked about how there's two clocks. That was the last podcast we did, okay? So, and, and the reason being is because they lied to you, evil lied to you, Satan lied to you about the clocks, Febram. Je December is the tenth month, so if we're we're now in the year 2024, in the month of March. March starts 2024. When the day one is, we're going to find out here. So we'll, we're just going to wait because we're still in mm -hmm. March. We're going to see when all of this starts to manifest. But here is the March calendar. Use the Advent calendar. So what do we say? What day? March? What was the 70 days? 31st. There it is. You understand that? That's he has risen. Mm. Oh shoot! I didn't even think about that. Which oh, also oh, delivered shoot. a mortal wound to our enemy when when he was resurrected. Well, three days later. So let's yeah. look at the calculation. Yeah, okay. okay, so now this is why this is so such an important podcast for the viewers to be listening here. Okay, because today we're at the nineteenth. 
This is seven from seven days. In the next seven days, I will strike a mortal wound to the enemy that he will not be able to recover from. That was the Kent Christmas prophecy on the 19th, 18th, 19th. Okay. Tomorrow's the 20th is spring. We stated very clearly in our podcast that God the Creator created seasons. I didn't create seasons, neither did neither did you. Neither did anybody in this world create seasons because seasons are a thing of God. God does things in right. his times and his seasons. Tomorrow begins the season of spring. We said that God's not going to, it would only make sense, he wouldn't birth a new era, a new kingdom in the dead of winter. He would birth things in, as you spring forward. Tomorrow begins spring. The 20th is the first day of spring. What a coincidence, because there aren't any. So we head into then this weekend, or as we step into Friday, it's 322 Skull and Bones. I don't know what that means. I just know that they love, the evil regime loves that number. Right. And then we find out this this weekend, so literally in one, two, three, four days from now is Purim. You can't, how, how does this happen? You got Purim this weekend. Mm -hmm. Trump's married to Melania, 7,000 days to the exact day. This is incredible. If you this if we month. run the Julian calendar, this would be the day that you that you select your lamb. This would be Exodus 12, 3, the day you select your lamb. You slaughter the lamb three days later, which would be on the 27th. That would mean that Nisan 15 would be the day the, the, that um, the angel of death could strike. Mm. Right before all that happens, you've got. So remember, we did the um, the podcast a couple months ago, or in September, October of last year, and I, it was like, yeah. what a coincidence that tr that Trump had a Glock forty five yeah. on the Day yeah. of Judgment. Okay, so the Day of Judgment was specifically September twenty five, and we know that you're to plow your fields into and by be complete by the sixth year six year six months six day right because you're, you're supposed to rest on the seven okay so this 25th of march is precisely exactly six months from when trump got the 45 the glock 45 the day of judgment i'll be back right so I'm just saying the day of judgment is the day that God seals what he's about to do on this earth. And so the seventh month starts is going to be in next month in, in, in April. So we're supposed to see something mad. And then so that's literally the day before Purim. What I'm trying to illustrate is the, the huge event calculations that are all screaming. Watch starting as this week ends. We head into next week because we got Purim, and if, if we are running on a Julian calendar, that actually indicates that we could see an angel of death moment or Passover in March. Mm. And I'm not oh. saying that so because because if you run the other calendar on the Hebrew calendar, I'm not I'm not denying this. The Hebrew <laughs> calendar has March over here in April. Okay, so we still have that as a time point, but it's fascinating because from when you actually look at the math, all the way when you run the math, it's 25 days forward that takes us over into April. And April is an incredible time point because you know the, the math that I've shown, I've known for, forever, uh, that 124 number, how God revealed to mm -hmm. me that it works on the markets. And so the, tw the 21st of April is 421, April 21, in the year 24. So that's 421124. The day after that actual 421 cycle would be Passover on the 22nd. Right. Whoa. And Passover relates specifically to the angel of death. You said you said 70 days. So 70 days specifically takes us to resurrection. And remember the Kim Clement prophecy. What did he say? Look for the sign. Look for the sign. What's the sign? I'm going to play it here in a second if I can find it. Resurrection. 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 Bo. Yep. What else? Is, this is crazy. Just think about this from this point of view. Haman, right? You have Purim. You have Haman. Yes. Haman, exactly. the, Haman sitting there rubbing his hands together thinking he's got one up, right? He's got one up right on here. everybody. This, this is it. What is the 25th of this month as well? What are they out here celebrating today, these people? 
They're selling Trump is broke. Trump is broke. Trump is broke. Right. That's okay. trending okay. on Twitter. 25th is the day they're supposed to be able to take everything of his, take his assets from him. How crazy is that? Well, the, and the 25th, there's all there's a blood moon on the 25th. There's a like blood moon that's, on the that's 25th. Right. This, it's yeah, New yeah. Year's Day. The 25th is New Year's Day based on the double dating calendar. So we actually could have New Year's on the 25th of May, um, March. And the prophecy is before, as 23 ends and 2024 begins, God's going to manifest something. We're going to see something. Uh, there will be a, a, a strike by the hand of God that he will not be able to recover from. And that lines up precisely seven days because Kent Christmas would have got the prophecy on the 18th because it was posted on the 19th on Monday. So therefore, between the 18th and the 20th, that'll be the 25th, the seventh day. So the 25th of March is uh, the blood moon is seven days to fulfill the Kent Christmas prophecy. It will be New Year's Day based on the Julian, based on the Julian calendar. I'm sorry, the double dating calendar of a, a second New Year's time point. And that's also... Um, uh, the day, what is it called? The, uh, the that's the day that uh, let me just expand this screen here. That's the uh, an Annunciation Day. The angel Gabriel give the revelation to Mary mm -hmm. Mm. on the that'll be the twenty fifth right. of March. Oh man, this could be a busy month. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, so and then that lead now this this is it gets more interesting here like just, just so if we do really have an angel of death moment because remember the angel of death the next morning israel was freed from bondage they mm -hmm. plundered egypt of all the gold and silver the bondage israel was freed from pharaoh they went started walking towards the red sea and they went with all the gold and silver as he plundered egypt and that potentially, and so that would be, if it was resurrection, but, um, that would lead to the death, which leads to resurrection. So that would be the, Jesus Christ died on a Thursday. He was in the tomb for three days and three nights. So you got to count Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There's your three days. He was in the tomb three nights. So Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, which therefore you get resurrection Sunday, which means that that's Julian 50, Julian 15, if you're back again, if you're using the Julian calendar, okay, Nissan 15 would be the 28th. Well, what happened on Nissan 15 in history? Hmm. Let me hmm. think. Uh, Jesus' crucifixion. Hmm. Israel, uh, Isaac was tricked to bless Jacob. Gideon's 300 was assembled. The angel of the Death killed the uh, God of angel. Uh, God's angel killed 185 Assyrian soldiers. Haman right. came to the king to convince him to wipe out the Jewish nation on the 15th. On the 15th, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. On the 15th, King Belshazzar was drinking from the golden chalices from the vessel. And on that night, he died. And his kingdom was given to the Medes and the Persians. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> and then the next day, so Nissan 15 or the 28th of March, the next day is, I got to actually put it on there. It's Good Friday. Why is it Good Friday? Because who's celebrating? Not the ones who love Jesus, the ones who killed Jesus. So they turned so the next day after Jesus is dead in the tomb, they call that day Party Party Friday, Good Friday. I'm tracking. Interesting, isn't all of this? Oh, my God. And then we step further into two days later, the resurrection, and that's 70 days to the exact day from January 21, which Kim Clement just spoke of very interesting and if i'm if i can just jump out of here for a second on this screen stop sharing oh my and i'm gonna and i'm gonna put this one on here to share this screen here if we can play this because because i want to show you this prophecy because this is is incredible 
how this is all playing out since you just referenced the two clocks and we just and it's it's, it's reference to the, the key of david okay so remember that because we talked about that too so here let me put put it the screen up here share screen He talks about the spirit of suffocation. That's Pythos, one I just shared earlier. Mm -hmm. And so what did he say? Look for the sign. What was the sign, guys? What did, he, what did he say? Resurrection. What, 70 days from the 21st of January? The 31st of March, which is what? Oh, what a coincidence. Resurrection. <laughs> yeah, wow. so... It, yeah, and he said, so he said 70 to 100 days, if the people act accordingly, which we know about this whole thing with the eclipse, with the story of Jonah and Nineveh, about how he's telling the people to repent. He's telling the people to repent, and it, it kind of seems to me that this whole thing in April, like you're, you're going to see liftoff at the end of March, according to, to all this, heading in that whole month. But, uh, yeah, this is also very interesting. Okay, so I, I just I want to put more as we're talking here because God is revealing. And since you brought that prophecy up, I just did the math. So we got 100 mm -hmm. days from uh, January 21, and that mm -hmm. leads us into April 30th, 2024. Okay, so what do the calendar charts uh, tell <laughs> well, us? We got in store for April 30th. Yeah, so uh, so let me show you this here, and this is already in the charts here. So I uh, see this is the crazy part. I've already draw a draw. God shown me how to draw this out. It's just that when everything's perfect, it just it all comes together. Okay, right. So th so this is April. If you look at what happened here, you've got um, you got Passover. Passover specifically is it ends on the thirtieth. Hmm. I'm going to repeat that. Passover, it starts on the 22nd, and then it Passover continues, and it goes all the way to the 30th of April. That's interesting. If you do the calculation from January 21, 2024, you had 100 days. Oh, what a coincidence. It just happens to be April 30th, 2024. The same exact thing. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. In a good way. It's good crazy. Wait, you said April 30th. Yeah. Yeah. It's 100 days. So May 1st is the next. So I'm just thinking about all the things that I believe are about to go down with the exposure and everything else. This is crazy. On May 1st, 2020, Donald Trump, President of the United States of America, in accordance with public law 87-20, as amended, do, by hereby, do hereby proclaim 
May 1st, 2020, as Law Day USA. I urge all Americans, including government officials, to observe this day by reflecting upon the importance of the rule of law in our nation and displaying <laughs> the flag of the United States in support of this national observance. And I especially urge the legal profession, the press, and the radio, television, and media industries to promote and participate in observance of this day. Now, that was in 2020. That's it's just wild. crazy. Do you know that this thing called... Mayday, 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 mayday. You know, you ever hear that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what day that is? I May got first? goosebumps, man. It's May 1. <laughs> May 1. I got uh, goosebumps, man. That's in, that's uh okay. Mayday, mayday, all right. mayday, the call sign that is for May 1. There's a, there's mm. a, you can google all that, but I have done the research on it. I know I'm I'm 100% I know what I'm I'm saying. What I'm trying to illustrate is all of this is in perfect perfect timing. Because yeah, God is. is doing everything in His perfect timing. So let's let's expand. Let's you know, let's continue even further. So <clears throat> what we've been talking about is so we talked about March. We talked about resurrection. So I, I do believe um, the year twenty twenty three comes to an end in March, which means that we're going to see a strike and something's going to manifest, and it's just going to. You could use this the word biblical mm -hmm. and and so it's and it's i find and the fact that resurrection is calculating out to be mathematically perfect relative to the um advent calendar is is extremely interesting to me and then the kim clement prophecy as the second witness actually there's two second because he has two prophetic words both indicating the same same exact day right we got we got we and, and, and right before that we got uh um, Esther prophet, you know, Esther, the per Purim, mm -hmm. we got that going now. We're still waiting for the angel of death that is on the earth. That's going to strike. Okay. So we're going to see hundreds, possibly thousands of death in a single night. Okay, that's mm -hmm. coming. March is supposed to, <laughs> March is supposed to start again. The word he's right here is start. March starts Bravo blessings, revival, awakening, vindication, open heaven. And what did Kim, what did Kent or Kim Clement say? The key to David. Do you know how you open uh, the door to heaven? How God opens the door with with David's key, the key to David, right? That's the that opens the heavens. So we're about to witness that the kings of the earth weep and wail. This will fulfill prophecy eighteen in a single day. So the only God only needs an hour, an hour, a minute, a, a day, whatever it is. But it's it's quick. Uh, we then step into April. So mm -hmm. April is incredibly powerful because April would be either. It's the same day. So if you run from potential Advent Passover, 25 days takes you to the same exact day, the 22nd of April. So April 22nd is either one of two things. It's either Passover, Hebrew, or it's Red Sea Miracle Advent. Mm. It's the same day. And the day before that is one four two one one two four. We're right. not going to get to June without the world freaking out, screaming, "Oh my God!" Because biblical is about to go down on this earth. Now this is crazy because it just because the crazy keeps. When I say crazy, I mean biblical. It just keeps continuing. Okay? Yeah. So when you when from August twenty first, twenty seventeen, we saw the first eclipse. Well, if we mm -hmm. run. Six years, six months, six weeks, and six days, you end up on April 8th. Mm. That's wild. That's wild. Six years, six months, six weeks, six days is April 8th, the cross formation. When that happens, it's seven days after resurrection and seven months to the exact day to the election hypnotic mm. november if that be the case hypnotic so it's it's seven days seven to eight days from resurrection seven months to the election and as the and in 2017 it crossed seven cities called nineveh i'm sorry seven cities called uh salem, salem. and this time it's crossing seven cities called nineveh and it makes a cross mm -hmm. on precisely 
a biblical calculation. This is crazy how this is all playing out. And then, uh, and that also, that also Exodus 4, 8, April 8th. Okay. So that's Exodus 4, 8. It says, you know, there'll be two, it'll be, if you don't believe the first sign, there'll be a second sign. That's, that's, that's Exodus, Exodus 4, 8. And then this is now important because now we get into Jonah 3, 4. So we're stepping into the great redo or the great undo, which causes the redo. Mm -hmm. So we're stepping into an undo, what happened in 2020, for the great redo in 2024. So what happened as a marker, because this is this Jonah is a marker, and God revealed this right. really important to me. This is so important to understand, because if you understand the math calculations, this is not possible unless it's by his design which it is, okay? So we watched Trump come into office 1,260 days later to the exact day oil went to negative $38 a barrel. Now that's yep. stupid because it doesn't make sense for oil to tr for them to pay you $38 to take <laughs> yeah. a barrel. It, it doesn't make sense. Right. So, it, so it's a sense. mark. It doesn't make sense. So it's a marker, okay? Just like what's happening right now. So God reveals me very special to me, okay? This Jonah cross that's about to happen is the same marker that happened with oil going to negative $38 a barrel in 2020, April. Mm. So listen closely here, everybody. When you run 30 days forward from oil going to zero, what do we talk about? We, we talked about this in our podcast, right? What happened? What broke? The Edenville Dam broke in the township of Hope, right. Michigan marking water breaking for the beginning of the birth of birth of the latter rain which came 10 days later the latter rain was birthed on what pentecost 31st of may this is perfect math so mm -hmm. that that happened in 2020 so 30 days later and god said very, something very specific i heard was use the noah noah calculation of it rain for 40 days and 40 nights oil went to zero 40 days and 40 nights was Pentecost, was the George Floyd riots, was peace taken from the earth. When the next, on that set, next day, you've got par rioting in Paris and all over Europe. And, and so, and since then we had wars and rumors of wars, right? And so peace was taken from the earth because second seal manifest on at 40 days. Hmm. We had a seal manifest on 40 days. Hmm interesting now we got another sign of jonah you read jonah 3 4 and what does jonah 3 4 say it says very specifically 40 days hmm so hmm. let's do the math <laughs> 40 days from the cross formation on april 8th takes us to may 18th interesting well let's do a little bit more interesting math so we have per Passover. If you study Exodus, this is all in Exodus 12. There's a, there's a link right here. People can do all. The, I've done all the research for you, so you just got to follow along, okay? But the links are here. Oh, by the way, if anybody wants this free pre presentation, simply take out your phones, scan this QR code and this entire slide deck, that I've worked on for thousands and thousands of hours is free. <laughs> Just download it. It's available to you. So let's go back to this slide right here. So <clears throat> if we do the calculations, point number two here, if we go from April 22nd, this is all scriptural. I'm not making this up. This is literally scriptural, written in Exodus because God gave us times. It took 18 days from when the angel of death showed up. They left Egypt. They walked to the Red Sea. It took 18 days. They then camped, Israel camped at the Red Sea for eight days, and they crossed the Red Sea on the 25th day. And then God closed the sea on Pharaoh and his army on the 25th day, and Pharaoh was destroyed. So br God brought judgment on Pharaoh and ultimate destruction on the 25th day. Hmm, so let's do a little math. From... Hebrew Passover, 25 days, takes us to precisely May 18th. <laughs> 
May 18th. Tracking. 25. So backwards is Passover. Well, let's let's do the second. I always like the second witness. What's the second witness with regard to the math? The Jonah sign. 40 yeah. days and 40 nights is right. May 18th. Well, how about a third witness? Let's do a third witness. Hmm. So in 2020, we counted 40 days from oil going to zero. And what Hebrew feast, what God's feast was it? What was it? It was Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was Pentecost. <clears throat> so now let's run the calendar. Let's look at the clock and the calendars. And 40 days and 40 nights from the Jonah sign, 25 days from Passover is May 18th. Fascinating. But the evening of the uh, May 18th into the 19th is Pentecost. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Oh, this is a lot. It's really good. It's really good. And 30 days, and I'm going, I'm slowing down here because I want people to really absorb this. And remember, it I know, rained, I'm trying to absorb and it. And so before 30 days, before 40 days and 40 nights, some oil going to zero, it was 30 days. The Edenville Dam broke in the township of Hope, Michigan. Mm -hmm. So if we use that same analogy, that will be 30 days from Jonah this time around. Because last time the marker was oil at negative $38. This okay. time the marker is Jonah. Okay. Right. So this is the great redo to undo what happened in 2020. Because after the second seal manifest, all hell, all hell broke loose on the earth because peace was taken from the earth. So now 30 days would be May 8th from the Jonah. So I'm telling you, May 6th, 7th, 8th, I'm telling you, that's in your seat. Something's, this would equate to it's, the water break Edenville Dam, which then leads us into, into taking us into judgment, which would be right into Pentecost, 18th into the 19th. Now let's put a little cherry on top of everything we just talked about. Hmm. <clears throat> so... All of that oh, said, if that doesn't that doesn't make you things that make you go, hmm, this is beyond hmm. This is like wow. If you look at all of these things, I'm like wow, mm -hmm. this is incredible. This is not possible, but yet it's happening, is it not? It is. All of this is the the math count that we, we saw it all happen in 2020. And now we're about to step into the same exact cycle. But now let's look. So let me ask you a question. Do you know? So remember the story of the Tower of not even a story, but remember what happened with the Tower of Babel? Yeah, what about it? Well, let's think about this. Hmm. What what does God read? Because if we're in Revelation, and what does God do in Revelation? He read oh, I'm just having fun with us. Okay, this is just yeah. a fun conversation, right? So Tower of Babel, hmm. So what was what was Nimrod trying to do? Trying to put He's the caps, trying to contact trying to put the, the capstone. Heavens. He's trying to put the capstone on the Tower of Babel to basically control all of humanity, reach heaven, but basically control all of humanity. And so he was trying to finish, he was trying to finish the Tower of Babel. And right before he finished the Tower of Babel, what happened? God showed up. Are you with They're me? They're getting or? too powerful. <clears throat> You're right. right. They're getting too uh, sound familiar with what were they getting? They're getting too what? Too powerful. Powerful, huh? Too powerful. Sound like what's going on right now? Does it not? They're getting too <clears throat> powerful. Well, let's mm -hmm. have some. Let's let's continue to expand upon this. So, right before the Tower of Babel was completed, God showed up, and what did He do? He destroyed the tower. Nimrod fled to uh, Iraq, but what did He do? He twisted everybody's tongues. He brought right. on different languages across mm -hmm. the world. He twisted everybody's what? Tongues. Languages, everything languages. Got mixed up. Yeah. But but forget the word languages. Use the word tongues. Let's be specific here. He twisted okay. everybody's tongues. Why I bring that up is you'll get to understand here in about a, a second. Because do you understand when that happened? It happened on Pentecost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Of 
Chris, why do you say okay? Expand upon that. <laughs> it's just it's my. It's a lot of information to take in, but it's good. No, it's, uh, it's good. Fun. Like it's just my mind's like it's. I love how you're able, hits. like the plan, like you're able to link everything hits. I mean, and that's God is his timing is perfect. I um, wanted, and also because there's so way. there's so much here. I just kind of go off off track a little bit. I've put these thousands and thousands of hours into a book, which, you know, we, we talked about earlier, but th this book goes, uh, the pre-sale started yesterday on the 18th and it's going to go live uh, in April. The reason I'm saying all this is because all of this is in the book, but th this is just a piece of what's in the book. People, this is a piece of what I've got in the book, what you just heard. There's so mm -hmm. much more how glitter this goes from creation to, to Christ's return, the calculations are all in this book. And if I haven't, like I just literally, uh, what Chris do. just did, he did this. He, I blew his mind. Well, it's not me blowing your mind, Chris. It's God giving the revelation of time to me to put the pieces together to blow your mind. That was mm. God blowing your mind. <laughs> and so if you want the book, just go to my website, and literally, when you get there, actually do put the code in triple three seven. So seven seven seven. It'll give you a thirty percent discount. But but this is for the pre sales. You might want to do this because this book is when when it goes live, it's going to go out in April. And if you don't have it ordered in time, you probably won't get it till May or June or something like that. But anybody who pre orders it will get it uh, on first delivery date here in the month uh, coming in the month of April. So I just wanted to kind of sidetrack that just because I, I want. Like it's just as you said, Chris. It's just mind blowing, the math. It is. It is. It and, really is. <laughs> and so, and now let's take let's let's take the math. Let's take this even further. So, at the Tower of Babel, God intervened on the world. He destroyed the Tower of Babel and twisted everybody's tongues. Tongues. And. What happened to the apostles at Pentecost? They spoke in what? Different tongues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see how none of this is random? It all happens in God's perfect timing. So Absolutely. when we go back to the calendar here, we've got Pentecost and the fall of Babylon thousands of years ago and what are we about to witness the greatest move of god's spirit ever in the history of the world and it's kind of interesting because when you study mayflower it landed in 1620 if you do the math of 400 years it takes you to the 2020 elections in november interesting mm -hmm. if you run the daniel cycle of time it will be for a time times and a half a time well, it's interesting because a time, times, and a half a time would be the 21st of May, hmm. two days after Pentecost. So, again, this is a bigger calculation of time. What I'm showing is any way you do the math, the Red Sea miracle, the judgment upon the world by the hand of God, the, the strike of all strikes comes in the month of what? May. 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 May is the strike of all strikes May. of all strikes. And now this gets even more fascinating. Why does it get more fascinating? We got, let's put another. The holiest day. The cherry on top. Remember this? Remember the, the war, Yom yeah. Kippur War? I remember you calling that out to the day. Because why? I was at the Kevin Zadai conference. Mm -hmm. I forget where I was with my wife. And I heard very clearly. Go study the Yom Kippur War. And when I studied it, I came to realize God was telling me, go study the dates, because that's what I do. There's four key dates, and we talked about this. So I said, don't be surprised if a war breaks out in the first week of October, specifically that Friday, because that was the last day. And that happened to be specifically the last day of Tabernacles. The war breaks out. This is this is incredible. Oh, this I is remember. all. No, no, I'm saying th this is all incredible. And so, yeah. there were four dates that were critical in the Yom Kippur War. The four dates were October 6th, October 26th, November 11, 11, 11, and the last day was May 31. 
when the ceasefire agreement was finally signed. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. When you run, you look at present day, set 50 years later, thou shall consecrate the 50th year, this is the Jubilee, and proclaim liberty throughout the land. Well, hmm, interesting. Because yep. the four dates of October 26 and 26, so we had the Tabernacle War start on the 26th of October, U.S. bombed Syria. Hmm, exactly. So check and check. So there was a third date, 11 11. Hmm. On November 11th, 2023, last year, 300,000 people called for a ceasefire. Hmm. Ah. Another perfect right on the mark. And what's the last date? May 30th. Hmm. Ceasefire. Will it happen? I don't know. God knows, not me. I'm showing you the math is perfect. <laughs> so that would be May 31 right here. May 31 would be exactly the completion of the, because it started right on the mark. Be interesting if the wars ended right on the mark. It would be. That would be wild. That would because be wild. How, how could the wars end? What do they fund the wars with, guys? Money. The financial system. Money. What's going to fall between now and May 31? The dollar better fall. <laughs> What's going to rise? Yeah. Because what, what happened? What happened when Israel left Pharaoh? They plundered Egypt. So what happened? That was the wealth transfer. So what happens between now and May 31? Wealth transfer? Wealth transfer. Because why? The dollar falls. The Kim Clement prophecy, the brothers of Goliath, fought, standing Lee, we will mm -hmm. cripple you. So... And so if the dollar's crippled, the dollar's no longer the world deserved currency. They can't use it for funding wars. Hmm. Right. The war started right on the 50-year mark. And don't be surprised if we watch. Again, I'm, this yeah. is not my, this is not, God didn't tell me this. This is, please, God didn't tell me this. This is my interpretation. If the war started on the 50-year mark, wouldn't it be an interesting coincidence, because there aren't any, that the war ends on the 50-year mark with a with with an ending to it yeah that would be on or by amazing. the 31st of may but if god intervenes upon the world don't be surprised any this impossibilities are possible because that's where exactly where god operates in the impossible so i want to finish with this because if that wasn't enough let's have a little <laughs> more fun Oh, people are going to already have to go back and listen to this. You're going to watch this about three times because this is yeah. the latest that God's revealed to me and it blows my mind. I've just been working on this for the past couple of weeks, putting it all together because it just keeps coming in and it keeps blow it keeps freaking me out. When I say freak out, I'm like, <laughs> I just keep laughing. Because, Bo, why do you laugh so much? Because the math is perfect. Bo, you know, I think Clay, Clay always joking. Bo, why are you you're the only guy that has no laughs all the time? Like, because the math is perfect. It, you know, mm -hmm. and then you got Chris doing this. His mind is blowing, right? Why? Because <laughs> why? Why is your mind being, being blown, Chris? Because God's math is perfect. It you is. See, it you is. You perfect. see what I'm saying? And so, you want some more perfect math? Hmm. Let's look at this. So, the six day war was how many days? Six days. So, which means it ends. <laughs> so, the last day was. Trick question. <laughs> June 9th. So I just want you to say that it's fun. You got to have some fun here, right? So, the sixth, yeah. day, the sixth day was June 9th, 1967. Okay. So, now we're going to go in a biblical cycles. We're going to use what's the magic number? Seven, right? So, we're going to go what? seven years forward to June 9th. 1974. Hmm, did anything happen on June 9th, 1974? Uh, maybe the petrodollar contract was signed with Saudi Arabia. Oh, that's right. Mm, to mm, the right. exact day. Well, okay, that's cool. Slap me silly. <laughs> <laughs> well, butter my biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> And what are we to That's proclaim in the Jubilee? What year is that? What year? Come on, guys. The 50th Proclaim year. liberty to land in the what year? 50th. 50th year. Okay, so let's go 50 years from June 9th, 1974. Oh, June 9th, 2024. We are to proclaim <laughs> liberty throughout the land. Oh, snap. And to all of its inhabitants. It shall be a Jubilee for you. Because God's never late. He's right on time <laughs> that's right that's right 
And yeah, and you and you've always stated that uh, you know, as a sign of the dollar failing, it would be like precious metals rising, right? Exactly. And with that seventy to one hundred day prophecy, I mean that would that would all lead into May, which that was, would mean precious was, metals would start rising here in April or into March. Even 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 this month. I mean, even, it's even already this, happened. Oh, March. No no right. no yeah. no no. It hasn't happened because remember we've said over and over and over and over again the roof. Okay, silver. You can right. keep jumping up and hitting your head on that roof above your you know on the ceiling. Okay, that ceiling is twenty five to twenty seven dollars in silver. It is right. not allowed to break that ceiling in gold at twenty two twenty two hundred. No way. Twenty two twenty three. It is not allowed to touch or breach that ceiling. Right. Because the dollar mm -hmm. is the world's reserve currency. So we, when we see gold breach 22, 2300 explode to three, 4,000, when you see silver blow through 25, $27 and go to 60, $70 in a single day, you know, you know, it's over. You know, I will have God goosebumps. just intervened upon ah. our world. I will have goosebumps upon goosebumps when that happens because oh, I, I know wait. it's they're they're trying okay. so hard right now, Bo, to, to just manip to keep it that, and it's not going to work. It's not yeah, every gonna time it hits twenty five, they kick it right back down. Mm -hmm. Silver right now is over twenty five, or just in that twenty five range. Yeah, it's, it's in gold, there, gold, gold twenty one fifty or something right now. So it's it's just it's sitting there. It's sitting. It's it's they're throwing everything at it to hold it. And and they will continue to hold it forever, just like Nimrod was building Babylon. And then a little mm -hmm. problem happened for Nimrod. God showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Nimrod had some problems. <laughs> he had to flee. <laughs> Nimrod had some problems. He flee to Iraq, and he changed his name to Gilgamesh. Many oh, yeah, will die. Threads on Many stuff. will die when God intervenes upon the world. The ones that remain will flee the United States just like Nimrod fled. I'm going to repeat that. Please listen to this. When God intervenes upon the world, Nimrod fled. The evil ones fled. They moved, they moved away. They moved to Iraq. The same is going to happen when God intervenes, the evil ones running within the United States, your enemies from within. You have been besieged, America, besieged by haters of America for seven years. I will take you out of your besiegement. So these ones within are going to flee the United States, never to return. They never, re they never went back to where Babylon was built. They never, re never went back there. They're going to flee the United States, never to return the United States. And then they will rise again with a different name. Some Just of like them are going to Cuba. Well, wherever they're going, I don't know because <laughs> God hasn't revealed that to me. But I want to remember when Nimrod, his name was Nimrod. He changed right. his name to Gilgamesh. Yeah. He's the first mm -hmm. Mason. Now it's called the Gilgamesh Project. Okay. So yep. when they flee the United States, they will reemerge at a later date. And this is all covered. We know they're talking in my book. But they will reveal that they will come back in a later date, just like Nimrod changed them to Gilgamesh. And now you have the Freemasons with a G. The, mm -hmm. So the, the Freemasons mm -hmm. are the Gilgamesh project. So they will reemerge with a new name in the future. But the same agenda that you've just witnessed for the past seven years, but specifically the past four years. OK, so all of this is coming back and there's so much more to talk about. But I think we covered so much at this point. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if people can put the all, you know can remember the, all the details we talked about, but please listen to this to it, podcast yeah. two or three times because the details is where you see God. I'm going to repeat that. The yeah. details is where you see the magnificence, the, the greatness of God. Yep. Yes, sir. Hey, yes, sir. Bo, I'm excited for it. One more thing. So I know you don't, I, I don't watch the news either, but I watched, so something happened today and I talked with this right before the show. Something happened today, like a confirmation, you know, you talk about Babylon and, and this oppressive system that we are in right now, right? The dollar, the, the, um, we're all, we're all part. We're just like the Israelites. We're all part of this system that oppresses us, that steals from us, that wants to keep us slaves under the U S dollar, the corporation 
of the United States, going all the way back to the Act of 1871, two constitutions. Yeah. Yeah. Today we got confirmation. So General Milley said this verbatim today to Congress. They were asking him, hey, you think we, because this was about the Afghanistan withdrawal. They were having a hearing today. And retired General Milley, Joint Chiefs of Staff, they asked him, so should we call in? They were asking, should they bring some certain generals in to testify? And his response to them was this. Why? Well, absolutely you could do that because you all are the board members of the, co- the corporation known as the United States government. He said that verbatim. Confirm it. They try and tell you that we are not a corporation and all this stuff, which again makes sense why Trump never took a paycheck because Trump didn't work for that corporation. He worked for the people, which is why he did it free for four years. So to get that confirm, this was the jo- former Joint Chief of Staff verifying that the United States government is a corporation if and that you the could, Congress um, are the board members. No, I did not know that. I, again, I love this stuff because they just, you know, just pieces coming together because that's what revelation is, is the reveal. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you could be so kind and if you find that link to me for me and send it oh, to me. Oh, you want me, the clip? I'll send you clip, the clip. I would yep. love to see that just because um, that just, it just, it would just add to uh, mm-hmm. revelation. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> he but, tried to tell you in the middle of the show. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, look, it's better you said it now because, because this is like, you know, this, this is just, you know, now we've got three cherries on top. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But also, but it's important to understand because uh, I want to finish with this. The United States, as you know, it, see, you have to think about what, the word, like, you know, when Jesus Christ was born, he was born of flesh. He had to do what? He had to die to self. He had to be baptized mm-hmm. to be reborn. Those of you who are listening to this podcast, if you've never been baptized in water, you're still of flesh. Listen really close to this. You're still of flesh. You've never died to self. And you've never been resurrected. And so you need to understand that's what baptism is. It's a death to self. And then you put Jesus Christ as number one. And so the point of that conversation is it's a death to a new birth. It's Mm -hmm. a death of their debt system. And that's what Kim, Kim Clement said, death to death, right? But it's a death of the old and a birth of a new so in closing the united states must die that corporation must die so it could be reborn one nation under god indivisible where all men are created equal and we will be reborn as a true nation and that's why kim clement said very specifically when 45 returns, he comes back as a praying president. Why? Because when Babylon falls, a new is born. This is the kingdom age, the kingdom economy. And then Trump will come back and he will have seen. Why will Trump come back as a praying president? Simple. Because he, with his own eyes, will witness signs, miracles, and wonders that are impossible yet he witnessed it with his own eyes and he will not be able to deny that there is a god a creator of all things and he is appointed 45 to fulfill isaiah 45 i will make your way straight he will rebuild my cities and set the captives free And he will restore the gold standard. He will rebuild the United States. And it will once again rise. And it will be the beacon of light to all the world during end times. It is an exciting event and world that we live in. Because God is the way maker. He's the miracle worker. He's the promise keeper. He's the light in the darkness. And he will not forsake his bride. That's right. That's right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Good stuff. Good stuff. It was good uh, 
it's good stuff, boy. You always got great stuff. And I just love it how everything always ties together. I love how, you know, all the prophecies, everything, all the numbers, everything always works. It's truly amazing. It's truly amazing. I appreciate everybody that uh, came out tonight, especially those. Uh, sorry about Rumble. <laughs> it's it's working. I don't know what was going on. It just decided to say, hey, what's up? So that yeah, came back, up? so that's good. Um, uh, we appreciate it, Bo, as always, that you come on. Everybody, me and Chris will be back Thursday night, and um, I got uh, my new project that I should be releasing this weekend. Uh, it's a little short film. Uh, it's something you're going to want to watch. So, uh, it should be pretty exciting. And uh, Chris, you got anything else before we got here? Well, Bo, Bo, God bless you. I love you, brother. Thank you for joining us once again. And God bless all of you. We'll see you on Thursday. Absolutely. Bo, any final words? Or are you good? I would just, just <laughs> know that when uh, we're going to go dark, okay? Because when all the darkness that's on this world, when light meets it, the only thing that they can do is there's like three things that are going to happen. One, we're, you know, they're going to print money like you've never seen before to basically try to prevent this collapse, but they can't stop it. We, we are going to see a financial, you know, they're going to, they're going to print money like never, like no tomorrow, but that's just the, the one, not so whatever, that's just going to happen. But the two things that I want to address is the moment you attack a world is the world's rear of currency. You're going to see military conflict. So don't be scared. Okay. Yeah. Don't be scared of what's about to go down. There's going to be, if there has to be military conflict, it's just how this has to play out. It'll be short lived, but there will be military conflict. But remember, as we head into May 31, you know, we, we have time windows here that we're we're looking at. Okay. So just be, be at peace, be at peace. And, and then lastly, when all of these things are going down, the only thing they can really do is pull the plug. Does that mean right. turn everything off? Okay. So internet goes, goes down. TV, it, broadcasting, yep. everything uh, will go down because uh, it'll be too like what happened. Remember, Jesus died. Jesus died on Going the cross. Dark. Everybody fled. It was dark. He told all the apostles, hey, I'm going to rise on the third day, but no one listened until he rose from the dead. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he did tell us that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But think about it, right? Everybody freaked. Oh, and so people are already freaking out. Well, we haven't, no, no, you haven't seen anything yet. You know, when <laughs> no, I know. Dark, Talk like, like the eclipse and stuff. Yeah. So, so this is going to get, this is going to get dark. It's going to get scary. Uh, and then again, then it comes down to, and when the lights come back on, right? So what will be then the lights come back on when Jesus rose from the dead, it was the greatest victory. When the lights come back on, we will see the greatest victory. When the lights come back on. So we're almost there okay we're we're in march next mm -hmm. week is no next week's gonna i believe things are gonna start to get crazy uh <laughs> next week into the end of the month because we're, we're stepping into 2024 we're here we just gotta wait but we're here it's about to go down uh and and we've got a critical time point we've got two major dates may 31 may 31 critical date because that lines up with the 19 war of 73 74 and then we have the petrodollar contract which just coincidentally was june 9th <laughs> to the exact day so all i can say is just you know however this plays out fear not um and when it fear when not. it does go down uh it's to be the best of times and the worst of times but when it does happen just be prepared have some extra food water uh, and those who do have means know that, uh, you know, this is, this is the shift of the ages. This is going to be between now, so the next, next say 70, whatever days, you know, between now and uh, end of May, this will be the shift of the ages. Yes. It's going to be wild. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be yeah, amazing. It's going to be wild. <sighs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I could use three days of darkness, you know? <laughs> I got a lot of I got I got plenty of books to read. So things I could do. I, I just ordered one too. Just gonna pray and get rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, so guys. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Absolutely, thanks, Bo. Hi, this is Bo Polney, and after thousands of requests, this is my official announcement. This is a heads up and a first glimpse of what I have been working on. I have been working on a book. This book is a prophetic understanding of God's perfect timing from creation to his return. It's going to be explosive. This is the first book I've ever written. 
and it will explain and illustrate with beautiful full color graphics of God's timing of events into the end of the age, the end of days. After reading it, you will want to keep this beautiful book on your coffee table and share it with all of your friends and family. I'm telling you, it is amazing and you're going to love it. This book is going to open your eyes to the present day events and how they are occurring with mathematical perfection as they directly fulfill events prophesied in Revelation over 2,000 years ago. God speaks through his word. We know that. He also speaks through his servants, the prophets. And yes, he does speak through numbers. If you want to see how truly perfect his timing is and the specific calculations he has revealed to me about our future into the end of the age, this book has all the incredible details. Are you ready to see the cover and a glimpse of inside images? Here you go. I doubt there's a book anywhere in the world like this one. It illustrates God's perfect timing from creation to the book of Revelation, including the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the seven seals of Revelation, the great American eclipses, the coming great Egyptian eclipses, the coming aliens, yes, we talk about aliens, the rise of Antichrist and the mark of the beast, the coming rapture, and all the way to the likely timing of Christ's return, and much, much more. The mathematical calculations are beyond any human probabilities, clearly illustrating the end of days was written from the beginning by the hand of God. This book has a lot of surprises and will open your eyes as to how truly great our God is. I believe it's going to blow your mind and get you excited and prepared for the times ahead. It'll change the way you look at recent events in the world. It'll give you the power and understanding of how long we really have into the end of days and how all things are working together for good. That's why after reading this book, you're gonna to begin to see how Revelation, like the Bible, is actually the good news as all things are manifesting in his perfect timing. So, how can you be the first to get your very own copy? Well, there's a link below this video. You can be the first to pre-order it and get it as soon as it comes out in April. And if you're one of the first 300 people to pre-order this book, you can receive a 30% discount by simply entering the code 777 at checkout. There's also a link for pre-orders on our website, so be sure to use that discount code. And yes, the book will be available on Amazon. However, no discount will be there. This is Bo Polney. I love you. Jesus loves you. And I know you will love this book. Thank you so much and God bless.